Ladies and gents, welcome back to Wells Gamers. You're here with Stephen Farrelly. I have a very special guest with me today, Mr. Todd Howard, Bethesda Game Studios. Thanks to the fine folk at Bethesda for organising this for us. Um, Todd, obviously, buzz of the show. I saw it in Utah. Um, two dragons at the end this time. Was that uh, put it in this demo specifically or was that a procedural thing? Because you were talking about that we in did, Utah. We did, for this demo, we have scripted their arrivals to make sure that we're getting dragons on the screen. And the way we want, after that, they do their own thing. So we did want to show um, another type of dragon, the frost dragon. So we kind of set it up where once you killed the other one, the other one would, would come in. Sometimes they overlap a little bit. Um, but it, we wanted to show that because there are a lot of new shout powers we wanted to show. Uh, here at E3 and uh, absorbing the soul and doing all that. So, um, is there only those two archetype uh, dragons? No, there are more. There are more. Though we're not talking about that yet. But there are, there are other ones. Um, I don't want to say the exact number. We're still messing with it. But there aren't. There aren't a lot. Um, but there are more. Yeah. Um, now let's step it back a bit. I want to talk a bit about Creation Engine. Um, now you guys have been demoing the game on 360. Mm-hmm. Is there any particular reason you haven't sort of shown the PC version? Because clearly that would be the higher end. Yeah, it does. Obviously, the PC version looks better. You know, it has higher textures. It can run much higher resolution, a lot of other uh, graphical features. We tend to show it on 360 so that um, there's a good baseline for people to look at, so that when they then see the PC version, it's going to go up. We'd rather do that than just be able to do 360 later and it takes a step down. Um, We're really excited with how it looks on the 360 and the PS3. So we do offer the art the same uh, for all the platforms. They just, you know, they render it uh, differently. Also, it, at things like this, I don't people probably don't know, but as a game developer, the 360 is just much easier to show it on. Right. From getting it started to showing it to controlling it, it's, it's just much easier to a demo on lo- logistically. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, going from Gamebryo to creation, what was, what was the outset goal for you guys in terms of the features that you wanted and so the sort of the stuff that you didn't want anymore, the kind of hang-ups that you had What's, what was the process going forward? Well, we came off of Fallout 3, and we, you know, we're always moving our own technology forward, whether that's using a piece of middleware or doing AI or, or things like that. And we had a pretty big list of what we felt the, the 360, the PS3, and the high-end PCs could, could do. And so it wasn't like we said, we're going to rewrite the engine. We just sort of started, okay, let's do this to the graphics. Let's do this to the gameplay. And over the course of... You know, we started hitting that hard right after Fallout 3. So I'd say over the course of like the next year and a half, it turns out, dude, we've rewritten all of this. Look how it looks, you know. Um, we're not using this anymore. We're not using this anymore. So that's actually when we decided to brand it. Like, you know, we should call it something our own. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it wasn't, you know, from the get-go, it wasn't, we're going to rewrite the whole engine. It was priority list, and we ended up we ended up rewriting probably more than we thought we were going to. But uh, it worked out. You always, always uh, support the mod community as well, and I know that this is going to going to have mod tools out of the box. Absolutely. Um, well, for download, not in the box. Right. But okay. You know yeah. Um, people like get their box and they're like, what the fuck? But have you guys What's thought about um, obviously, and obviously the PC community kind of enjoys that a lot. But yeah. have you thought about sort of giving that access, that level of yeah, access yeah. to the consoles? I, um, I think like our PC mod community, that is one of the things that's great about our games. You know, um, we've always supported it. We want to continue to do it. But, you know, a lot of our audience is on the consoles, and so they're not experiencing that. And we have talked to Microsoft and Sony, okay, how do we do this? And the good news is is that those things have started to happen with games like you know, Forza 3 and sharing all your car stuff. Or um, Rock Band's a really good example where you can make your own tracks, like where well, you're authoring them somewhere else, and then you're uploading them to the 360. Um, there are still a lot of issues to solve with, because these aren't instances like a song or a car. Yeah. You know, you could download a mod that destroys your game. We can't have that. So we're still, we have not solved, even on paper yet, how do we handle security? How do we handle um, not messing up your save games and, and things like that? So it is not going to be solved for the game's release. But it's something that we're going to continue to look at um, because we, we think it's an awesome part of the game yeah. that... You know, I, the majority of our audience is, isn't seeing. Is there any opportunity um, going forward to actually sort of take some of the PC mod stuff and just port that to console for it the console? It actually works. If you have a dev kit, you can take the PC mod files, put them on your Xbox, and they work. Yeah. They actually work on a Morrowind, Oblivion, and Fallout 3. Like for all those games, like I can take PC mods and put them on my Xbox, and they work. And so it's we have one system, so we just need to figure out the logistics of how how do we get it there, how do we secure it, how do we make it safe. 
um, you know, it's something that we would really like to do. Well, that's tantalizing and pretty cool for the console yeah, players awesome. out there. Yeah. Here's this awesome thing, and we're not we're not doing it right yeah. now. What do you think of that answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sticking with the mod community for a quick second as well, um, is there anything that you guys added to Skyrim that was taken from Oblivion mods or even like Fallout mods that just seemed to work that you guys maybe had never thought of before? There's um there's a bunch in terms of uh, it, it's nice when there's they're creating so many things and then they're all voting so you can see what's popular. We do look at a lot of the popular ones um, to see, well, how do they change the game balance? Because that's fairly easy to do. Um, you know, sometimes we're adding dungeons and adventures, so we, we take less from that. But it's more, how do they change the health damage ratios or this, that, and the other. One of the, one of the ones we liked early on, uh, early on in Oblivion, someone made a mod that made the bows like, a lot more powerful, but you couldn't shoot them as fast. Right. So you just... They just felt better. You, know, you felt more powerful instead of like shooting over and over. So that was one of the things we're like, oh, we need to we need to do that in Skyrim. It needs to work work like this. So the bows, the one we show is a lower end bow. You can pull them back faster, but the higher end bows, they take longer to pull back, and then when you shoot there, they do a ton of damage. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, now, as far as the gameplay goes, um, the Radiant story system sounds amazing. It's, it's a little bit hard to wrap some it people. Is. Yeah, it's to wrap your head. Explain. Yeah. Um, the best way to explain it is it's the tool our designers use to make quests. And when they make a quest, they can make something specific, like this guy is going to give you this quest. So every part of the quest, we call them roles. The people in it, the places, the items, those are all roles that the designer can fill out, either specifically or then conditionalize. Like as opposed to saying, I want this guy, you can say, I want a guy in town who likes you a lot. Or I want a dark elf in town who hates you. Or I want a dark elf tavern owner who doesn't know you like you can conditionalize all of those roles and you can look at what the player's done so you can say um, I'm going to give you this quest, a good example is I'm going to give you this quest and usually it takes place at this other dungeon to get this item well I am through the quest going to change the role of that dungeon conditionalize it for you know you haven't fought um, you haven't fought high level undead in a while is there a dungeon nearby that has high level undead can I, I'm going to put the, the item there and the guy says Instead of pointing to that dungeon, you point you to that dungeon. Those, those kinds of things, um, if that makes sense. But it, even for us, it was hard to wrap our heads around. We just built the system, and then we messed with how we were going to use it. Um, and now it's, it's, you know, honestly, it's kind of a light touch in the game. We, we don't want people to notice it. Right. Is, it. is there a reason that you felt compelled to sort of, I guess, guide players to areas that they hadn't been to or anything like that? Is it just to, so that they can sort of see all the assets that you've put into it? Well... We want to try to make things more interesting, but we were inspired by, in Fallout 3, we wrote this big script that would generate random encounters. And so when you walk down roads, sometimes you get encounters, and we conditionalized the script for what you had done. And we were just inspired by that in terms of, oh, we should, that's how we should do. So like if the talent company, like if you've killed enough of them, then they're just going to come after you a bit more. Things like that, or, um, you know, once you hit the Enclave, now vertebrates are landing. There are a couple of other examples based on quests you had finished where things will happen. Um, and so we really liked the end result of that and then wanted to systemize it for, for the game. Okay. Yeah. Now, you're also sort of concentrating on the northern area of mm -hmm. Tamriel. Um, and obviously the Nord race is really sort of tied into this and that's the guy that you've been showing off. What's the, um, what's the thought process for players that just don't ever plays the human characters and don't really care about that kind of lineage for that particular race. Mm -hmm. um, what are you doing to sort of, I guess, invite them to sort of become a dragonborn as well? And does the game world react to, to different races based on them being dragon dragonborn? And well, no matter what race you pick, you are dragonborn. We're kind of showing this guy because he's, he's very on the nose for the tone of the game, so people can yeah. understand it easily. Um, but you can be any of the races. You, know, you can be an Argonian lizard um, who is dragonborn. Um, and sorry, I forgot the other part of the question. Oh, how do they react when you're a race? It's mostly a flavor thing. Right. Um, there's a little bit of, you know, this is a little harder. You can't do this with a race, but only it's a little bit. It's more, it's more dialogue flavor th than anything. Yeah. And then you do have different powers based on which race you pick. So okay. your skills start out differently, and then each of the races has its own racial powers, like some cool special abilities. Now, you didn't touch very much on the guild's out in Utah, but during the presentation here, there was a bit of talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is there a specific number of guilds? Can people kind of expect what they've had in the past in other Elder Scrolls games? Well, the three that we're talking about and the three we're focused on are the Companions for the Warriors, the Thieves Guild for Thieves, and the College of Winterhold for Mages, because those are the three main archetypes that, that we want to pay off on. There is other stuff in the game. Uh, I don't know if or when we're going to talk about that, honestly, uh, but there are other groups in the game, but they're not as, they're not as big as those, those factions. Now, um, last question, and this is kind of a bit of a weird, convoluted one. Um, so, there was... Un- I know you can't talk about DLC, but based on what has come before, sure. it's definitely going to happen. Um, Fallout 3 and, uh, I guess, New Vegas are both really good examples of this. At the end of the game, if you finished it and you got, like, DLC, you couldn't go back and just replay sorry when you finished the game before the DLC came out you couldn't just go back and continue right. to explore are you guys going to lock the player out if they complete this game no no that was a mistake yeah no. we were really confident about that then the game came out and we heard pretty loud and clear that was not what they wanted so we're not going to do that again no no you'll definitely be able to when you finish the main quest you can just keep playing and uh, you mentioned DLC we would like to do DLC we don't have specific plans yet um but they've been really successful, and we, we like making them. So, I mean, right now I can say that we'd like to do less DLC, but bigger ones. You know, more, more substantial. The Fallout 3 pace that we did was very, was very chaotic. Like, we did a lot of them. We had two overlapping groups, and, and we'd kind of like to... We don't know what we're going to make yet, but we'd like them to be closer to an expansion pack feel. Oh, nice. So, um, and one last super quick thing. I mentioned this in Utah, but I'm just going to remind you. Um, when you kill a person in a house, you should be able to... Sleep in their bed. Yeah, I sleep know you're asking yeah. that. It's yeah. on the list. Right. I remember that, yeah. Awesome. It's, not, it's not done well. yet, but we're... Yeah, exactly. will be a DLC. All right, cool. We're going to do it. <laughs> um, all right, thanks so much for that, Todd. Um, game looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, thanks you too. Cheers. Thanks.